Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes. In this video, we're going to get you guys ready to take the Texas EC6 subject core exam to become a Texas educator. In this video, we're going to be looking at scientific variables and how to graph your data coming up next. Okay, if this is the first video in the series for you to check out, I would encourage you to click on this card right here. It will take you to my playlist, which will show all previous videos and future videos to come. Uh, now, if you cannot see the card because your device doesn't show it, I will also link that in my description, so check out the playlist there. Uh, also, look at my description because I'm going to have other resources for you guys as you prepare for your exam. And I'm also going to link the previous video, which was called Significant Figures and a Scientific Method. Now, I would encourage you to probably watch that video before this one because as we start our lesson, I'm going to reference materials out of that video, which will make a lot more sense if you watched it first. But it's not necessary. I think you'll be able to catch on just fine. So let's go ahead and start as we do five minutes per lesson. Uh, I will pick up uh, new lessons in the next one or I'll have uh, more material in the next lesson. So these are going to be an ongoing series. So let's go ahead and start our timer for five minutes starting now. Okay, so in our last video, we were looking at an experiment that had to do with does fertilizer have an effect on plant growth? So I'm going to go ahead and put up this slide right here, which shows you uh, some constant or control variables. Now, those are variables that remain the same in the experiment. Now, in this experiment, it had to do with plants. So I want to make sure no matter which plant we're looking at as an experimental group, that all plants have the same conditions going on. So they get the same amount of water, the same soil, the same uh, temperature, um, they're the same type of plant, same age of plant, everything is the same. Those are called your controlled variables or constant variables. That's important they stay the same because the one thing we change in the experiment is what we're going to test. Now, that's what we're going to look at in this slide. So I told you a minute ago we're looking at how fertilizer has an effect on plant growth. That's what I want to test. And so when I look at this, I say, well, that's my independent variable. It is the one independent thing, the isolated thing that I'm changing in the experiment to see if it has an effect. Now, if you notice, it's the thing that I change. Now, I'm emphasizing the word I because independent starts with I. That's a good way to remember that. So the independent variable is what you're changing in the experiment. You can only have one thing you change in an experiment at a time because otherwise you wouldn't know what's really having the effect in the experiment that you're looking at. So it's the independent variable. It could be a lot of different things, but for this particular experiment, it's the fertilizer. So we look at this last slide and we notice that the plant that received fertilizer had a positive effect of growth. It was growing much faster and healthier than the plant that received no fertilizer. Now what we're measuring or looking at is called the dependent variable. And that's an easy word to remember because children are dependents of their parents. So your parent has to give your children you know, food, resources, and so on. So the dependent variable is always going to be dependent on the independent variable, which means had we not had the fertilizer, then the two plants would have grown the same. The plant that grew much healthier and faster, it was a dependent variable based upon the fertilizer I gave it, which was the independent variable. So the dependent variable is always going to be what you're measuring or observing during the experiment. The thing you hope to see that's changing, whether positive, negative, or whatever. If there's no change, then you know that the independent variable had no effect on whatever it was you were testing, okay? All right, so the last part of the scientific method was um, step number seven. And so step number seven was communicating the results. So when we communicate our results, if we're not talking to science people, they're probably not going to read your data. So the best thing to look at is a graph. There are four main types of graphs. So let's take a look at the definition or a, a, uh, basically a description of each one of those. So the first one is a concept map. Now, a concept map is uh, how things are interconnected to one another. So, the best example I could give you probably would be a, a food web and how different species are interconnected within their environment. Another way you could use a concept map would be to illustrate uh, the different types of traits that are passed on from, one, from parent to offspring. Uh, so that could be a concept map. Probably not a good uh, graph to use in our experiment with a plant. The next one would be the, um, the circle graph or the pie graph. This is how different parts of uh, something are related to the whole. So uh, a good one to look at there would be if we're looking at 
um, demographics, like we want to know the different uh, types of races in a different type of culture. If we want to look at, say, uh, an environmental system, we want to know what animals live there, or plant species. We can see how they compare with one another, if there's more than one or about equal to others or so on. Uh, we could look at elements in the dirt or soil, what type of elements show up in a certain soil or so on. We could do that in a pie graph. A line graph is a great representation of what we measured. If you notice here in this example, it shows you know, our plant growth. It's very obvious to see, this is how we compare two variables, how the plant that received fertilizer outgrew the plant that received none. So when we compare two things, usually the x-axis is going to be your representation of time, which is your horizontal axis. Then finally we have our bar graph. Bar graphs can be used a lot of different ways, but again it can be used in our experiment with the plants. When we look at this bar graph, we're seeing that it's very obvious with a side-by-side -side comparison that the plant that received fertilizer grew much healthier faster than the plant that did not receive it. And so that's another way to represent uh, the graphs. And so um, again, our independent variable is what we change in the experiment, it's what we're testing. The dependent variable is the results of that test. And then finally, the constant or the control variables are the control variables, sorry about that. The control variables are the things that stay the same for the experimental group and the control group. Okay, so hopefully that wraps that up and helps you out. So just some final comments before we end our video. If you find these videos helpful, I would encourage you guys to let me know in the comments. Uh, it really encourages me to know that these are helping you guys. If you have suggestions, I would encourage you to put that as well. And one thing, here's a survey kind of question I would like to know. Have you watched more than one of these videos at this point in the series as you prepare for your Texas exam for the EC6? Uh, please place those comments below and I will definitely be giving you a thumbs up to let you know that I appreciate you watching those. If you have uh, any types of ways to comment on how I can improve these videos, please leave those as well. Um, I would encourage you guys, real quickly before you go, please uh, subscribe to my channel. I love it when you guys subscribe and also hit the notification bell. That will allow you to uh, get notifications when a new video posts. Uh, so thanks so much for watching, please like and share, and we'll see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.